Hallo, herzlich willkommen bei Shilog und nochmal zurück zur längsten Demo der Welt, nämlich der von The Letter. Ein, es ist ja cool, dass du dann viel vom Spiel zu sehen bekommst, aber äh, es ist wirklich lang, damit hätte ich nicht gerechnet. Um, as he nears, Ash casually raises his hand in greeting, also wir haben gerade Zack getroffen, and... Sup, Z-Man, my main man, what's crack a lack in my homie? Pretty fly for an Asian guy, wir haben es gehört. The awkwardness that descends within the immediate vic vicinity of a small group is palpable, palpable, palpable enough. <laughs> Somewhere to our left a girl giggles, and only then do I become aware of my mouth hanging open. I'm almost amazed how Ash can say that out loud with a straight face. Almost. Considering his track record, I should be used to it by now. Zack seems to be. Yo, stop trying to act black, Ashton. And you're the only one who calls me Z-Man. There's fondness underneath his exasperated tone. If this were any other people, uh, person, he'd likely be offended, but years of friendship and familiarity have made those words harmless to the other's ear. Or at least enough for both to take it in stride. <laughs> It's been a while, Zack. I hope you didn't get into trouble again. Not much to get into trouble lately without you, I'm afraid. I'll let you know if something comes up, though. Nah, I ended up with chicken down stuck on me last time I agreed. I'd really love at least this year to pass without some sort of accident happening again. Hey, I take offense to that. It wasn't that bad. You really have no idea. A beat passes, and then Zack laughs. Hey, I'm kidding! You know you can always count on me. <sighs> It's a story only the two of them are privy to. Every now and then, Ash will enlist Zack's help on something. Beck and I never really found out what the real deal is with those adventures, as Ash calls them, and both aren't willing to tell due to some unspoken agreement. She insists she insists that if it's Ash, it's likely not something illegal or life-threatening. I tend to believe her on that. Sometimes. Oh well, boys will be boys, I guess. I give Zack a small wave from behind Ash when his attention eventually turns on me. Bella! To me. Huh? Rebecca's now with you. Is she still sick? A bit. But she's up and went to work this morning. You know she doesn't listen to anyone that's not Ash. Yes, she does. No, she doesn't. You're literally the only person she'll listen to when she's feeling stubborn. And it's true. They've known each other far longer than any of us in the group, childhood friends and all. But don't worry, Zack. She's probably on her way here now. She promised she wouldn't miss your movie. Isabella! Oh, thank goodness! Speak of the devil. Oh man, mit diesem ganzen Drama, geht's hier auch noch mal horrormäßig zu? Ich meine, die Tussi auf dem Dachboden war ja gruselig, aber... Becca, you're just in time. I have to lean back a little with the way her face is almost invading my personal space, but she places her hand on either side of my head to keep me still. Was stimmt denn nicht mit dir? She stares at me intently, concerned, filling her eyes. Becca, you're squishing my face. How are you? Are you all right? Why wouldn't I be? Rose called me earlier. Oh, the alte Petze. Those four words tell me all I need to know. Since I don't have my family living close by and the only other relative I have here works on the far side of the country, I have my company Becker's co I gave my company Becker's contact number in case of emergency. I should have known Rose would call her. I push Becker's hands away from my face. Although she lets go, her eyebrows remain drawn together. Oh, no, no, everything's good. Rose covered for me at work today. That's not what I'm talking about. How's your head? <coughs> Beside me, Ash snickers. I bite back the urge to elbow him in place to, to, of trying to avoid Becca's hands as she tries to reach out for the sad area. I do my best to dodge her all at once, moving to hide behind Zack. Sorry for using you as a human shield, Zack. Oh, it's nothing. I just slipped off a few steps on my way down. I blacked out for a few seconds and had a minor bump, but it's just that. You blacked out? It's not something to brush off. Da mag sie recht haben, aber ich bin gerade nicht auf ihrer Seite, weil Becca mir total auf die Nerven geht. Come on, at least let me check it. It's extremely minor. You wouldn't even know it's there. Vor allem du bist Lehrerin, keine Krankenschwester. Isabella, this isn't a laughing matter. She did look pale when I saw her. Ja, fang du an. an. Wow, thanks a lot, Ashton. You traitor. I'll get you back for this. Just you wait. What? I'm just saying it as it is. If you mentioned this earlier, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. I'm sorry. Saw her? Yeah, they arrived together. 
Bella looked fine to me then. I don't know. Möchte noch jemand seine Meinung über Isabellas Wohlbefinden über Isabellas Kopf hinweg kundtun? Something crosses Becca's face, but it's gone before I can figure out what it is. Ooh, uh, eifersüchtig. Oh. Drama. That's, that's good. At least she didn't have to travel alone, right? At least. Eifersucht. Good. Ey, ich, ähm, ich wollte ein Horrorspiel, ja? Und jetzt habe ich hier so eine Seifenoper. See, I'm okay. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. And, and I don't want to miss Zach's film. Genau. We can always watch it some other time. Sorry, Zachary. No, it's good. But you guys should really keep it down. We're starting to attract some attention. Das könnte aber auch an der Frau mit den rosafarbenen Haaren liegen, nicht unbedingt an unserem Gespräch. It's the premiere. The premiere's different. Right, Zach? I showed him a pleading look. Zach's a sensible guy. He'll understand. Please understand. Not really. But Rebecca has a point. In the end, I think it's your call. Genau. Oh, for heaven's sake. Please, Becca. I really don't want to miss it. Du bist eine erwachsene Frau. Du musst nicht deine Nachbarin fragen, ob du eine Premiere sehen darfst. You're not missing it. We're just moving it on a different day so we can have a... Look, you guys. Ah, du auch noch. Ash's loud sigh unexpectedly cuts through the conversation. He's pinching the bridge of his nose as he speaks, something he usually does when he's getting impatient. If she says she's okay, then there's nothing we can do about it. It's not like we can stop her either. Besides, she's still acting like the same old Isabella to me, if she can still run around like that. Why are you taking her side? Weil es meine Entscheidung ist. I'm not. But if she wants to watch Zack's movie with us, I'm not going to stop her. She's probably the one looking forward to it the most. Ash, that's... <sighs> you, of all people, should know... Tell you what, if I notice something amiss with her, I'll take her to the nearest hospital myself. Is that good enough for you? I already know the answer before Becca voices it out. When at last she releases a deep breath and nods all right with, a, with great reluctance, I immediately tackle her into a hug. Thanks, Becca! Du musst dich nicht bei ihr bedanken, wenn sie dich deine eigenen Entscheidungen treffen. Was sind das für komische Leute? It's always been you with him, isn't it? Ooh. Did you say something? Me? Uh, nothing. Don't mind me. I versuchte If you say so. Okay, guys, showtime's close, so I think I'm gonna get us some snacks. Also Watch eigentlich... And then let's head inside. Müsste das, um es perfekt zu haben, müsste Zack in die rosafarbene Tussi verliebt sein, sie in Ash und Ash in Isabella. Und Isabella am besten in Rose. Ja, das wäre sehr romantisch. Na, eigentlich ja nicht, weil dann alle unglücklich sind. Uh, anyone here has a smaller bill? I think I do. Hold on. Ich dachte, du bist pleite. I pull myself off from Becca to get my wallet from my bag and... What's this? It's already in Ash's hand before I can even react. Behind him, Becca and Zack are both giving the piece of paper an intrigued look. Oh nein. Es war all, gerade alles wieder gut. No! Give it back! It's just a paper. I don't care! Give it! Looks ancient, too. Why do you keep this around? I try to reach for it, but he holds the paper way above his head. I've never been particularly sensitive about my own hate, but right now I really wish I had that advantage over them. Don't open over him. it! What's the big deal? It's not like it's a love letter. I don't see any reason to... Wenn du es noch nicht geöffnet hast, weißt du nicht, ob es ein Liebesbrief ist. Hold on a second. This is, isn't it? Even if it is, it's not for you. Okay, now I'm curious. Du bist immer neugierig. I'm telling you, it's nothing like that. It's... The rest of my words are lost when he unfolds the paper. Achievement unlocked too early for Halloween. I can't breathe. My heart feels stuck in my throat, pounding, threatening to burst out. Vaguely, I note how my hands are trembling at my sides. Clasping them together doesn't do any good. They are still shaking, but I hang on to them, regardless. The awful, sick weight that has taken its core into my stomach back in the house returns full force. How do I fix this? How do I fix this? How do I fix this? Someone, please. Today is turning out to be a horrible nightmare. Send this to five people or else. Well, that's interesting. Um, guys, I think we should listen to Bella first. Warum wollt ihr mir zuhören? Ich habe halt einen alten Kettenbrief in der Tasche. Aren't you a few days early for Halloween? 
Ash waves the paper in front of me, giving me a fleeting glimpse of its contents. I don't need to see it. I don't want to see. The letters, the words, every stroke written in blood is already embedded in my mind. Maybe I should have just thrown it away when I had the chance. That way, that way... It's not a prank! It makes all of them stop. Even I am surprised with how steady my voice is. What did you say? This isn't a prank! I saw something! Uh oh. Ich glaube, wir kriegen diesmal keine Wahl, es jemandem zu erzählen, oder nicht? Hold on. Are we still talking about this paper? Or is it about the urban legend again? Both. I know it sounds ridiculous. You're saying this is a primitive version of a chain letter. And now that we've seen it, we're now cursed. Jetzt haben wir sogar sechs Leute mindestens gesehen. Vielleicht sogar sieben. Wow. Wir haben die Bedingungen des, des Briefs übertroffen. You've got to be kidding me. See? This is why I didn't want to tell you guys. Isabella, aren't you taking this a bit too far? Ach du, du bist doch nur eifersüchtig. It's not a joke. Will you guys listen to me first? I saw something in the house earlier. It stood right in front of me. If I hadn't gotten away, that thing might have... Right. And in broad daylight, Isabella. Even someone gullible would find the logic in that screwed up. There's also no way in hell that this supernatural shit is true. But it's real! Ooh. What do you think I saw? Hallucination? A delusion? Didn't you say you fell down some stairs? So maybe Rebecca's right. It happened after, when I was trying to get away. I almost got stuck in the same room with that thing. We're all in danger. I thought you were my friends. Why don't you believe me? We are, and you know that. But this thing and that thing has got nothing to do with the other. That's a good question. Wenn euch ein wirklich guter Freund so eine verrückte Geschichte erzählt und er besteht drauf und der hat jetzt auch keine Vorgeschichte von irgendwelchen psychischen Problemen. Auf der einen Seite will man sowas nicht glauben, die meisten Menschen glauben halt nicht an Geister und auf der anderen Seite, wenn das ein guter Freund, dem man eigentlich vertraut, also der eigentlich jetzt niemand ist, der solche Geschichten erfindet und keiner ist, den ihr als psychisch instabil kennengelernt habt, dann ist es wahrscheinlich echt schwer. Ich wüsste noch nicht, was ich machen würde. When Rose called earlier, I thought she's just exaggerating. But based on what I'm seeing right now, maybe it's better if we really postpone this for now. Also du hast geglaubt, Rose übertreibt und trotzdem bist du hierher gerannt wie so eine Furie. Don't bother. Without another word, I snatched the letter out of Ash's hand and stuff it back in my bag with more force than necessary. I'm tired. I got cursed, saw a ghost, probably lost a sale, got kicked out of the open house, I'm supposed to be hosting, my own friends won't believe me, and all of them think I'm crazy. To top it all, to top it all off, there's a dull ache at the back of my head begging for a little attention I can't afford to give it right now. Honestly, there's only so much a person can take within a single day, I just want to go home, curl up in my bed and never think about today. But before I can take a single step away from the group... Guys! Oh, Zack is böse! Zack rarely ever raises his voice, even when there's a point he wants to drive home, and hearing him take that tone completely throws me off. Even Ash and Becca. Whatever harsh words yet to come out from the argument immediately die on our tongues. Why don't we all calm down first? I'm sure Isabella has her reasons too. No need to be hard on her. Richtig, außerdem die beiden haben angefangen. Vor allem die rosahaarige. And hey, ain't this supposed to be a happy get-together? We haven't seen each other for months. I'd really love to know what y'all have been up to. I only ever get to talk to Bella over chat. Please. He has a point. Ash, for all his attempts to look cool and distant, has also been looking forward to this. He even took the time to call this morning for a reminder. He never does that. Becca too, I'm pretty sure that's another reason why she got out of bed today. Yet despite Zack's attempts to lighten things up or Ash's and Becca's acquisition rushes, the tightness in my chest remains. I should have just kept it to myself, or at least went with the idea that it's a prank. If I did, things might not have turned out the way they had. No sour mood, no bad vibes. Careless, so careless. Maybe leaving is the better decision for all of us? Ich will jetzt den Film aus Prinzip. Any other day, I'd excuse myself to go straight home. Oh, oh Zack mag uns lieber als vorher. Er könnte also irgendwann diese uns völlig fremde Frau, die uns mittlerweile noch lieber mag als alle unsere Freunde. Oh, uh, Becca mag uns weniger. Aber Ash mag uns, glaube ich, jetzt 
Ich habe keine Ahnung. Also Rebecca, würde ich sagen, habe ich was verloren. Aber die ist ja auch eifersüchtig. But this is something special to Zack. Something he worked so hard to bring to life. I should know better. I might be having a bad day, but being with a few people I care about far, far outweighs the idea of spending the rest of the day throwing a tantrum alone in my room. And what if the thing in the attic follows me home? I don't want to be left with my thoughts either. I can still see whenever I close my eyes. I see it. Verzeihung. Schluck auf. And maybe if I stay, let our heads cool down first before telling them what happened. They'll listen to me. There's nothing you can't solve with a calm head. One step at a time, Isabella, that's what Mama used to tell me. Besides, I don't have the heart to ditch Zack. A smile is back on my face when I look back at them. If we keep arguing here, we're going to miss the first few minutes. All right, that's the Isabella I know. Oh, good. I thought for sure you were going to cry. What if it echt ein in the... <coughs> This time I really do send an elbow straight to his stomach. Stupid Ash, being vertically challenged has, it per has its perks too. What was that for? Vertically challenged. Stop calling me a crybaby. I'm not one. Oh, don't cry. Stop it. Okay, scaredy cat then. That too. If you repeat that, I swear I'll... <sighs> Let's just go. Die ist schlecht gelaunt. Without another word, Becca goes inside. She doesn't even stop to wait for us when I call after her. Ash and I exchange, exchange looks at that, the same question likely swimming inside our minds. Okay, er ist so ein super mega Detektiv, der Leute super lesen kann und er merkt nicht, dass Rebecca offensichtlich in ihn verknallt und jetzt eifersüchtig ist. Super Detektiv. Did something happen at school after I left? Is she having a bad day too? I'll try asking her about it later, I guess. So, uh, you guys go catch up with her. I'll go get us the food, I promise. But you'll miss it. Didn't you say watching a movie without food ain't fun? And it ain't like I haven't seen it. I made it, remember? I'll be in there soon. One friendly tap on my shoulder and then he's gone. A few moviegoers are still milling about. Some are still waiting in line for tickets, but otherwise most of the crowds are already inside. There's nothing more for us to do here now. Not a word of protest comes from me when Ash gestures for the two of us to head inside. And then? And then what? Are you sure it wasn't one of the cleaning crews? And what we need to film then? Absolutely sure. Somehow, halfway through the movie, the conversation steered towards what happened in the mansion. To be fair, Zack was the one who brought it up again. In his own movie re premiere. Now the film's just serving as a background noise while we are speaking in hushed tones, careful not to disturb anyone else in the side of the small hall. Well, except for Ash. I just hope we don't end up arguing about it again. We'd all get kicked out for sure. Though, with how loud Ash's voice is, we'll probably get thrown out way before any argument happens. Only Becca still remains engrossed in the movie, completely ignoring us. She's been quite the she's been quite the whole evening speaking only when referred to. If I didn't know any better, I think we did something that offended her. Did we? And then I ran. You heard what happened after. I still think it's something else. It was standing right in front of me, Ash. He's one of the smartest people I know, but geez, he should learn to listen. Plus, didn't he say he doesn't believe in these things? Why is he in this conversation again? I heard what you said, but it's a small room. There are a lot of things someone else could have done there without your knowledge. Hm. If I could see it up close, maybe I can... I am not going back there. Ain't that a problem if you're hosting an open house? Rose does the first floor tour. I ain't sure ghosts can be restricted to one room, Bella. The vice? There are no ghosts, Zack. Stop putting useless ideas in her head. Hmm. Yeah, but I was thinking. Maybe all the house needs is a blessing. Wasn't it left uninhabited for years? Hmm. Oh, the house did change hands over the years from one distant relative to relative of the Ermine gods to another. None of them bothered to live in it though, and it remained it that way up uh, remained that way up until its current owners decided to sell it. Why didn't I think of that? I didn't peg you as the religious type, Zack. Nothing like that, Ash. Who knows though? It might bring something positive to the place. Ich mein, sie ist ja römisch katholisch. Und wir hatten die Option zu beten, statt dieses Monster, diesen Zombie, was auch immer es war, anzusehen. Also, sie ist offenbar irgendwie gläubig. 
That's not a bad idea. I just don't know where I could find some- You're not seriously considering a suggestion, are you? Do you have a better idea? I know where. I can contact him for you if you want. You'd do that? Or we can find you a psychologist instead. There are very few times in my life when I wish my glowers can kill. This is one of those. Ash, that is not a very appropriate thing to say right now. No, wait, that's not what I meant. And I? Ethnographer. I meant ethnographer. Ash, Ethn This guy's a psychologist too, of course, if you... Also, ethnographer? Ethnographiker? Ich hab keinen, das habe ich noch nie gehört. Ethno hat irgendwas mit Herkunft zu tun, oder? Und Graf ist doch irgendwas mit Schrift. Schriftherkunft? Ich bin jetzt überfragt. Ich habe keine Ahnung, was ein Ethnographer ist. Ashton, if you don't stop. Rebecca knows the guy I'm talking about too. She can vouch for him. Rebecca tears her eyes away from the screen at the mention of her name. Ah, huh? what? Oh, are you talking about Professor Andrew? He used to work with my parents at the university. Ja, die ist noch sauer. Huh? Wie machen die? Das haben die letzte Mal auch schon geschafft. Es schafft immer eine Katze hier dann doch drin zu bleiben, wenn ich die rausschmeiße. Boah. <lacht> nicht bei Horror Games. Auch wenn das hier gerade nicht so gruselig ist. And can you guys keep it down? Sorry. The scaredy cat here mentioned curses. Not that I'm saying this is one. But talking to him is a better solution for me than getting a random priest to bless an old house. He'll even help you figure things out. Teach you a couple things. And probably put your fears to rest since this looks to be bothering you a lot. Ash might be right too. However, what Zach suggests is something I'm more familiar with. Granted, they don't believe me, they're only giving me suggestions to put my mind at ease, but it's better than being ignored or laughed at. I can't take comfort, I can't take comfort in knowing they're willing to hear me out. So, what do you think? It's your call. We'll go with whatever you want. I don't know. Hmm. Also jetzt so im echten Leben würde ich wohl sagen, wir treffen uns mit dem Wissenschaftler, weil es wahrscheinlich da nichts ist und derjenige dann einfach beruhigt ist. Der hat sich dann irgendwas eingebildet oder so. Aber wir sind Isabella, wir haben da wirklich was gesehen. Wir haben jetzt natürlich nicht ausprobiert, was ähm, weggucken und beten gebracht hätte. Also ob der Geist sich tatsächlich von Priestern beeindrucken lässt. Wir wissen ja nicht mal, wer das ist. Ich würde aber wahrscheinlich doch eher den Weg der Wissenschaft gehen. Ich nenne den Professor. I'll think about it, but if ever, I'd like to give talking to Andrew a try. Okay, Zack scheint uns das nicht übel zu nehmen, dass wir seine Idee nicht gewählt haben, aber Ash freut sich, dass wir seine genommen haben. Also in, Bezie in Bezug auf die Beziehung, gute Entscheidung. Is that okay? Won't he have other things to do? Frage ist auch, warum wir uns nicht mit beiden treffen können. He is a bit busy, but he'll make time for me. He's my go-to person when I'm stuck in something. He won't mind if I bring a friend with me this time. If you're sure. I guess that settles it then. Guys, I said keep it down. You keep insisting that we still watch it. You're not even paying attention yourselves. Zu unserer Verteidigung, das ist auch immer dasselbe Bild. Das scheint ein sehr langweiliger Film zu sein. It ain't a big deal, Rebecca. I'm the one who broached the subject in the first place. It's still your film, Zachary. A good film, mind you. You worked hard on this. The least we could do is watch it with you. And that's what you're all doing. I really appreciate all of you making time for this. Sorry, Becca. We'll stop now. I throw her an apologetic look, even if Ash's the only one she could she should be reprimanding, reprimanding, but her attention is already back on the screen. She's ignoring us again. When Becca's acting this way, there's a big chance something is nagging at her. We really need to talk. You all fall into a comfortable silence after, the kind only you can share you can only share with people you're most at ease with. For the first time today the letter lays forgotten in my bag, if only for a few hours. Night has fallen by the time we exit the movie house. Despite the late hour, the streets are still bustling full of people, those about to head home, those to meet someone, even those simply wandering about. Walking in this sea of unfamiliar souls, it strikes me how easy it is for one to get lost in a city as nondescript as Luxbourne. I was afraid too, at one point back when I was new, and I had just set foot in this place. Now, with familiar faces walking with me, it feels a little like home. Zack and Ash bid us goodbye shortly before Beck and I crossed the other side, uh, to the other side of the street. 
the former claiming he's got a few freelance jobs to take care of before the day ends. And Ash, the Tag hat schon geendet. Ah, who knows, he never tells. Sometimes he'll just randomly appear at your doorstep, looking for a place to crash. He does that to Zack a lot, much to the latter's frustration. But he's a busy guy too, in spite of the laid back air he gives off. Thanks for today, everyone! Diese Art zu sprechen, ne? das ist so... No problem, Zack. I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Huh? A sensation. Cold, sickening, drowning, my chest tightening, breathing, becoming labored. I can taste blood in my mouth, the edges of my vision blurs. In the distance, amidst the countless nameless people going about their lives, a voice reaches out to me. Hilf mir. Pleading, even as I clench my eyes tight and clasp my hand over my ears. Whispering and whispering and whispering. Calling out. No, not me. Somebody, help me. Isabella? Earth to Isabella? At her voice, the whole world suddenly snaps into place. The murmur's gone. When I open my eyes, Becca raises an eyebrow at me in question. Weren't you listening? Are you coming with me? Oh, I... yeah. Just... okay. Sorry, I spaced out. You always do that. Man, is die zickig. I follow her without complaint, but not before sneaking a glance to the far end of the street. Where the voice came from, where another set of eyes might be staring at me. Nothing. There are only Zack and Ash watching over us as we head back to where Pe Becca parked her car. If I'm expecting to see something or someone there, I try not to let it show, try not to think of the tiny pinpricks of fear crawling at the pit of my stomach. See you guys some other time. Bye. Y yeah, see ya. Another glance and with a final wave we go off on our ways. I don't know what I saw, I don't know what I heard, I don't want to know. And if this is what would help me sleep tonight, what would give back that normalcy in my life, then so be it. Hey, das war erst der erste Tag. The darkness closes around me, grasping, pulling, engulfing me. The ground caves in and without warning I'm falling. My eyes snap open. For an instant it doesn't immediately regist register where I am. Okay, hier sind wirklich viele instant noodle Dinger. Both my back and shoulders ache after I've fallen asleep, all hunched up the night before. Drenched in sweat, the nest of pillows I often keep around me feels more suffocating than comforting. I let my eyes adjust to the bright morning light streaming through my window and allow my breathing to slow down before untangling myself from the pile. I haven't had a single dream since coming to Luxburn, or at least none I can recall having. It's a shame because they used to be so vivid. Not the crazy vivid. A more pleasant kind I'll tell my siblings about. Maybe it's just the stress of living alone? The knowledge that I'll always wake up in an empty apartment with no one to tell stories to. What time is it? Uh, fünf Uhr. Have, habit forces me to look over at the clock, even with the soreness weighing heavily on my shoulders and the compulsion to never leave my bed for the day. In a heartbeat, I'm up. Oh man. Of all the times to oversleep! Towel? Towel? Where's my towel? Admittedly, it's a weekend, as an unspoken rule that entitles me to an extra hours of sleep. But if Rose didn't kill me yesterday, she sure as hell will now. And right after what happened. Oh lord, one box of donuts' peace offering won't be enough the second time around. Mm. Grabbing my towel, I'm already a few short steps away from the bathroom when a muffled ringing breaks out of my back. There's a moment of indecision at first, my mind conflicted whether I should just ignore or answer it, but what if it's Rose? Or worse, our boss. Ah, sheesh, in the end, the rational part of my brain wins out. The letter from yesterday peeks out when I pull the device out. Just the sight of it is enough to put me in a foul mood and takes every force of will to ignore it in favor of answering the call. The call ID reads MAMA, okay? Huh? It's around... Uh, a quarter to 5 p.m. in the Philippines right now. That's an unusual time for them to call. Usually it's around noon time here and I'm the one calling, not the other way around. Better for them to use that money on something else than an international call. 
Regardless, in the most cheerful tone I can gather. Hello? Hello? Grace? How are you? Grace. Okay, das ist unser dritter Vorname. Mama, I'm doing okay. How are you guys over there? We're good, we're good. EJ won a storytelling contest at school the other week. Brought home a medal. I thought you should know. Yeah. There's a tired lilt in her voice as she speaks. It's been there since Papa had to leave his job. I wish there's something I can do for her. But from miles away like this, the least I'm able to make is not to make her worry. If only my older brother would actually lend her a hand, but Lord knows if that'll ever happen. Odds are Kuya Jordan's already out drinking right now. Again. I can't count on my older sister either, knowing she has a family of her own and, well... Eight ends find... Eight ends? Eight ends financial situation isn't exactly great right now, having run herself knee-deep in debt. Great! That's great! Tell him congratulations from me. And let him know I'm gonna send him a little something extra this Christmas. How about Nico? Karen? Michael? I hope they're okay? They're doing well. They wanted to talk to you, but they're all busy with school. Oh no, that's fine. I don't want to bother them. Just tell them to keep doing their best for me. I'll just call back when I know they're not busy. And Papa? How's Papa doing? It's a subject, I'm a, a subject I'm a bit hesitant to broach. From the way Mama's voice hitches, she doesn't want to bring it up either. Papa... Grace, Papa's... He's having a little difficulty right now. Weak appetite, he's having trouble swallowing, and lost a few pounds. But the doctor said we should keep encouraging him. It just means his body's accepting his new treatment well. The money you sent last time helped a lot to pay for it, by the way. Oh. I see. Th that's good. I won't deny that life has gotten tougher for our family. It used to be easy back when Papa was in good shape. But ever since he was diagno diagnosed with a sickness five years ago, five years ago, he had been unable to provide for us. Now the burden of feeding eight mouth and settling Papa's bills all rest on my shoulders. Although Mama makes a little accepting sewing and laundry jobs in our neighborhood, it's scarcely enough to cover the costs of day-to-day -day living, let alone the bloating hospital bills. We can't even expect help from our own government because the health insurance there barely covers anything. I'm sure he'll get better soon. Is he well enough to talk? Do you think I'll be able to speak to him, Ma? Silence. I start to think that the call, call got cut until... Listen, Grace. Maybe it's better if we transfer Papa to a different hospital. Somewhere cheaper? What? Why? Did something happen? Is it the deposit issue again? Give me the hospital's number. I'll talk to them. No, it's nothing bad. The service here is good. Too good. Even the doctors. But I'm worried you're working yourself to the ground because of it. Mama, we've been through this before. I want the best for Papa. And don't worry about the bills or the medicine, or me for that matter. I can handle myself. Everything's going well here. In fact, in fact, we're about to close a large sale. Oh, scheinbar nimmt sie Hannah Wright's Enthusiasmus an. Hopefully. If not, then I'll find another way. She doesn't need to know that. Sorry, Mama. You taught me not to lie. Yet look what I'm, at what I'm doing. I'll have money to send over soon to cover the rest of Papa's treatment. And there's more than enough for Karen, Nico, Michael, and EJ's school tuition, too. Thank you so much, dear. I appreciate it. We all do. But I... I just wish you'd come home to us soon. Ah... Uh. Kaylin, Kailan, Ka Uvi? When are you coming home? EJ, the youngest, used to be the only person asking me that. How do you respond to a question you don't have a definite answer to? Five years later and I still can't give them a straight one. I smile though Mama can't see it. I fight to keep my lips from quivering, my voice from shaking. She's got enough on her plate as it is. No need to weigh her down with unnecessary concerns. Promise me you'll be there to welcome me when I do, okay? Of course. I'm sorry, Grace. I need to take this for a while. There's a small commotion on the other end. The sound of gates opening, the voice of a child, EJ talking excitedly about his day at school, the tapping of feet on the floorboards as he runs. It's been years since I went home, but I can still picture the whole scene in my mind. How tall is he now? Are the neighborhood kids bullying him now that I'm not around? 
Did Mama rearrange the furniture in the living room again? What are they having for dinner today? I miss them. I miss them so much. It's okay, Ma. I need to go too. I've got work today. I'll call again soon, alright? On a Saturday? Oh, never mind. Take care of yourself, dear. I love you. I love you. Bye. It ends with a soft click leaving half-truth and empty promises hanging in the air. Oh, das deprimiert mich. Ich will mich gruseln, nicht deprimiert sein. Oh, süß, ein Foto. Jetzt aber Schluss hier. Closing my eyes for a moment, I take a deep breath and shake away the thoughts beginning to swim in my head. It's pointless to mull over these things right now. Okay, Isabella. Time to get that mansion sold. Unfortunately, before I can take a single step away from my phone, it rings again. No doubt Mama forgot to say something. Mama? Did you forget anything? Uh-oh. Excuse you. I'm too young to be your mom. Are you still sleeping? Hold on, never mind that. Get yourself in the office. Hurry! Uh-oh. Office? What about the open house? Oh, no. Is it Sir John? Did he hear about yesterday? Am I in trouble? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm gonna get yelled at, aren't I? What do I do? Um, I'll buy you an extra box of donuts if... No, no, no. It's nothing like that. Will you calm down? Get yourself here, all right? I'll tell you everything then. There's the telltale din of several feet shuffling against a wooden flooring and an indistinct yelling in the background before Rose cuts the connection. That isn't in any way comforting. Comforting. But it's enough reason for me to hastily discard my phone and finish my shower in record time. I make it to our office within 20 minutes of leaving my apartment completely disheveled and out of breath. A feat if I take into account my usual travel time. Routine clamor common to Briar Reality Corporation's Luxburn office greets me as soon as my foot crosses the threshold. Papers rustling, telephones ringing at sporadic intervals, agents talking at varying volumes, staff moving about and... Where the hell is C? Where are my employees? Sir John is loud. What the actual fuck, guys? Of all the times to disappear without notice. Also, ich bin hier. My boss's words turn muffled as someone else closes the door to his office. Likely the work of our HR manager. Machen wir das mal zu. Kann der Boss sich da drin erstmal austoben? Throughout the past weeks, he's been in a bad mood over a few employees who have failed to report to work. I hear they're still trying to get a hold of them, but to no avail. The result is half their workload have been shifted to available stuff, so as not to lose clients. Not that I mind the extra work. If anything, it means I'll have more to send to my family back home. Although the rumors of a branch closure circulating because of this indeed is a bit worrisome. Naja, und wenn die Leute verschwunden sind, ist ihnen ja vielleicht was passiert. My back barely touches the top of my table when Rose pulls me aside. Here. I need you to help me with these papers. If you could also get these signed and photocopied before lunch today, that would be great. One after another, she thrusts a bunch of paperwork in my hands without explanation. A page flutters away from the top of the pile and I lean down to pick it up, my eyes scanning the top of the pages as I straighten. A purchase and sale agreement. Rose simply gestures her thumb in the direction of a visitor lounge when I tilt my head in question. When I tilt my head in question, what? Also, there seated on the sofa and looking completely out of place, in the humbly decorated room is the same couple from the day before. The rights. Something bubbles in my throat. Their presence at the office can only mean one thing. They're buying it? We got a deal? She swats my hand, tugging her sleeve, although her eyes are alight with something akin to joy. She wants the sale to happen as much as I do, and now that it's here, the deal needs to be closed yet. Documents need to be signed still, but the elation is there along with a foreboding feeling I can't quite pinpoint. I had to do a little damage control, but they're already interested in acquiring the property, even before they attended the open house. As if they were interested, Mr. Sison. I mean, isn't it obvious? They already hired an interior designer. I've never seen a buyer as aggressive as Madame Wright. She didn't even try to negotiate a lower rate. Oh. One at a time, Rose. I can't process everything you're saying at once. What do you mean? They're paying 15% higher than the listing price. As long as we get the paperwork done as soon as possible. I think if we allow it, they'll be paying up front, too. Even with that urban legend? Rose nods. Oh, I was so sure we lost the sale after yesterday. Don't look so surprised. 
We still have to conduct some last few checks before we completely hand it over to them. Please. I'll happily do the paperwork duty, Rose. I'll even go to the land registry myself and make sure the property changes hands with every single legal blessing. Don't they have better things to spend money on? I'd haggle it down to the lowest possible price if I were in their place, especially with the stories attached to it. Not that my opinion matters one, matters one bit here. We're just their agents who are going to receive the hefty commission after all, nothing more. Rose gives me a pat on the shoulder, signaling that she's heading back to them, and an unspoken instruction for me to follow after I'm done. It doesn't take me long to finish what work she left me. In fact, having our boss sign the agreement is the easiest, since it has put since it has put him in a better mood to the entire office's relief. Ma'am Hannah calls me over the moment she notices my presence at the lounge door. She welcomes me with a bright smile, her movements more open than one would typically, typically expect from a passing client to have. Oh, Isabel! How are you feeling? Isabella! You looked awfully dreadful yesterday. Isabella, I'm fine now, ma'am. I appreciate your concern. I really don't understand why they can't get my name right. It's fairly common. It shouldn't be too hard to remember. Regardless, I hand them the copy of the agreement. Wonderful. Your team works unbelievably fast. Madame Hannah skins through each of them with a scrutinizing eye, checking every page for any inconsistencies and errors. Despite the unassuming impression she gives off, she appears fully aware of what to look for and the process contracts like these undergoes. And the process... It is surprising, to be quite honest. I haven't packed her for someone who is well-versed in these things, yet here she is. She shows some of it to her husband, and he responds with the same passive interest as if he's more than happy to leave everything to her. Ja, niemals hübsche Blondinen unterschätzen. I can't tell if it is purely because he believes that she's capable enough, doesn't care about what they are buying, or he simply finds paperwork tedious. Apparently satisfied with, with what she's seen, Mem Hanna clasps her hand together before extending it to us for a shake. Rose and I release the breath we've been holding, both of us more than happy to return the gesture. That settles it then. Uh, are you really sure about this property, ma'am? Um, das fällt dir jetzt ein? Rose könnte sauer werden. We could easily find you a bigger one among our current listings. Bigger? Something with a modern touch? Something not haunted, perhaps? Rose shoots me a warning glance that clearly says don't make a scene, we're almost there. Of course, why wouldn't I be? The house is absolutely perfect, isn't it, darling? A helipad would still be a nice addition. Yes, well, we'll get there eventually, love. As I was saying, if your partner had the documents yesterday, we would have bought it right there immediately. Shame she didn't have it. W well, there's still a few necessary documents we need you to sign after, but we'll let you know once we have those finalized. We'll be handling the process for the rest, so don't worry about it, ma'am. Within a week, I hope. We still have a housewarming party to plan, after all. You know how much thought to be put into those things. Yeah, wer weiß das nicht? There are servants for that, darling. Love, wouldn't it be better if we handled it ourselves? A personal touch of sorts. It is our housewarming party and our new home. No more than a week, ma'am. Barring unexpected delay, of course. You can leave it to us. Excellent. Well then, I'll leave you two to it. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. Oh, and before we forget... She discreetly folds something into both her hands and wings, a finger raised to her lips, demanding our silence. I know both of you worked hard on getting us this beautiful mansion. Did I mention we reward our people generously? But this is... Ma'am, I can't accept this. Don't you worry, darling. It's a small thing coming from us. Oh, we have so much money. We can give it to everyone. Consider this your bonus for a job well done. She smiles sweetly like this. Like this is simply the most normal thing to do in the world. Oh, before I forget, my lovely interior designer would appreciate it if you hand her a copy of the floor plans as soon as possible. She's dying to work on the house. You can do that, yes? Here's her contact. C certainly, ma'am. We'll have it processed as soon as possible. I knew I could count on you, lovelies. I hope to see you too soon so we can get this closed. Just like that, transaction over and done with. My mind's still reeling after they've left. Other agents would kill to have clients like them. 
A part of me feels lucky about the fact no lengthy nego negotiations, no sudden change of minds, just talk, signatures, a few handshakes here and there, and we're done. The other part? A second ago, we sold a haunted property to two innocent clients. Sure, the commission's big. Big enough to continue funding Papa's treatment and hospitalization. Big enough to pay for all four of my younger siblings' schooling. Heck, it'll keep me away from instant noodle diet for a month. I don't have to go back to the mansion as well once the deal has been closed, much to my sanity's relief. But knowing that something's in there, and we gave it to the good couple despite that? Oh, Isabella, the things you do to sell a house and get money. Papa won't be happy with that. At least I have good news to tell them next time I call home. The little lie I told Mama this morning isn't a lie anymore. Well, they're something. Oh, yes, they are. So how does it feel? How does what feel? Your first big multi-million pound sale, silly. I know you've been with us for years, but this has got to be memorable for you. Memorable is an understatement, Rose. Come on, show some enthusiasm. They gave us a bonus, too. Aside from the commission and the other bonus boss promised. What are you going to do with it? Uh, I don't know. Send it home, probably? All of it? Not everything, of course. Most of it. I'll leave some for my living expenses. Listen here, Isabella. I'll teach you something I should have told you before we ended your training. She slings an arm over my shoulders and leans in closer to my ear as though she's about to share a big secret. It's okay to celebrate from time to time. I don't get it. It's simple. Go out, do something for yourself. Throw a party and treat your friends to free food. Didn't you say the last one's some sort of tradition back at home for you? Hello, this is practically a done deal. Uh, isn't throwing a party a bit excessive? Your call. I won't say no to an invitation, by the way, in case you really are planning to throw one. A few drinks would be nice, too. Thank you very much. I don't think my apartment's big enough for that. You could always move? Bloody hell, you're working in real estate. I think I'll pass. That's too much of an unnecessary expense for me. But I did promise Becca free lunch in case the sale goes well. You go do that. Hold on a sec. She quickly removes herself from me to answer the phone on her desk. Her tone shifts from playful to professional in the span of a few seconds. Today? Not a problem, ma'am. I could bring you a copy of the contract if... Must be another client. Nothing surprising there. Surprising there. She's only... She's one of BRC's top agents, no matter how modest she appears. A saleswoman through and through. I, on the other hand, have a very little knack for it. Of course, I learned eventually I had to. But someone else will, without a doubt, do a better job. Once, though, in a drunken stupor, Rose told me a story of what could have been. Years ago, wide-eyed, young and brimming with yet-to-be-fulfilled dreams and ambitions, she was a term or two away from a nursing degree. Out of courtesy, I never pressed on the matter further. But perhaps it's where the sense of fondness started. A small connection due to one similar experience of our respective lives, of goals we both let pass, pass us by because of the circumstances we were in. I'd be happy to discuss this over tea, ma'am. All right, I'll be there. Thank you. New client? Reassigned. Have you heard from Mark and all? Not since the first visit to the mansion. Why? No news from the HR yet? None at all. Boss thinks he ran away. I doubt it, though. He's too much of a wimp for that. There must be another reason. <sighs> Who knows? Anyway, I've got to meet this one. I'll see you later. She throws a wave over her shoulder as she rush rushes out of the office. The lunchtime bell sounds shortly after, followed by the chatter of fellow agents also heading out for a much-needed break. Ordinarily, there's no need for me to go out. But oversleeping didn't allow me the luxury of packing my own lunch today, if one considers taking an instant noodle cup from my pantry packing your lunch. Time to make good on the promise I made to Becca, I suppose. Maybe invite Zack and Ash too. Oh man. Okay, ich mache hier jetzt noch mal einen Schnitt. Das ist wirklich eine sehr lange Demo. Ähm, es ist ziemlich schwierig für mich. Es ist jetzt ja nicht uninteressant, dieses ganze Zwischenmenschliche. Aber für ein Horrorgame, finde ich, ziehen sich die Passagen zwischen den gruseligen Szenen ganz schön. Also, also wir hatten nur eine richtige gruselige Szene, die da mit dem Quicktime-Event und so ein paar, die atmosphärisch nicht schlecht waren. Aber es zieht sich, muss ich sagen. Ich weiß noch nicht, was ich davon halten soll. 
Ähm, klar, wenn ich jetzt kein Let's Play machen würde, könnte ich schneller lesen, dann, dann wird es vielleicht etwas schneller gehen, aber ich, ich weiß noch nicht, was ich von dem Spiel halten soll. Ich mache jetzt nochmal einen Schnitt. Ähm, danke fürs Zusehen und hoffentlich bis zur nächsten Folge. Tschüss!